Hey everyone, so in today's video, I am sharing with you all my hidden gems from the Sephora collection. I'm sure a lot of us have gone into Sephora, taken a look at the Sephora collection makeup, like that big carousel, and wondered if Sephora's house brand is anything worth looking into. Especially because a lot of the products in comparison to the other items in Sephora are less pricey. Honestly, a lot of these products are pretty much drugstore prices at this point, just with inflation. I have been trying out a bunch of different Sephora collection products to find the absolute best of the best. And honestly, I would consider these hidden gems at Sephora. Overall, I hope you guys find it super helpful. I'm going to be giving you all reviews and demos as well in natural light so you can really get a feel for how the products apply and look on my skin. Again, right up close no filters. That is how we do it on my channel. So if you appreciate it, I would absolutely love to have you back. Make sure to subscribe. And also another note about these kinds of videos, especially when I'm talking about affordable makeup, I never will recommend an affordable product specifically because it is affordable. I need the formula in and of itself to stack up and to be good. I like high-end products. I like drugstore priced products because of the formulas themselves. Does that make sense? If that aligns with you, again, my name's Amanda. I would love to have you back. Okay, I just got to jump into the product that I'm probably the most excited about. I'm really excited that I found this bronzer and it is a new launch from the Sephora collection. It is the Sephora bronzer matte. It's very basic title here. I have mine in the shade 00 Sunkissed Haze and they call it a silky soft powder that melts instantly into the skin for a true life natural sun-kissed effect with eight hour wear. Can I just tell you guys, all of those claims are true in my experience. I had previously tried out the Sephora Collection bronzed matte bronzer and I was a fan of this one. It was a very, very thin product, went on the skin very evenly. However, this newer, formulation from Sephora is even silkier and I find that I enjoy building it up on the skin even more. It has this really beautiful melt into the skin feel. You know, there are some more affordable matte bronzers that look really chalky or can almost have too much pigment in a way that it feels like you're applying an eyeshadow on the face. And that can mean that the product goes really muddy very quickly. For me personally, I found this very easy to control and to build up on the skin. I was wondering when I saw the pan, I'm like, is this gonna look orange? I actually gave you a swatch next to my Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Cream Bronzer, which is one of my favorite bronzer products. And I found the colors to be pretty similar. I see a little bit more pink in this one, but as a whole, I think that this kind of shade, very good for someone with more light skin, not going to look straight orange. It lasts really well. And for, you know, in general, I feel very excited about this particular release. This is a very no fuss product and going into the summer, you know, we're in spring now. I just think a lot of us do not have time to be worrying about our bronzer, like how it's going to be applied and whether or not it's going to give us trouble today. Bronzers are one of those things where if I have a very choppy look, I just, it, it'll bug me throughout the day. This one just applies so effortlessly. It's a like really fuss free, foolproof product. I have been very, very happy with it. Very lightweight and soft looking on the skin. And as a whole, it's just beautiful. It's just a really, really beautiful formula. So, and by the way, I am posting this during the Sephora savings event. With 30% off, this is cheaper than a lot of drugstore makeup, but without the 30%, I would happily purchase this. I think it's a steal. By the way, most of the items that I'm wearing on my face right now are the Sephora collection, but I will leave everything on my face uh, down below for you guys. We talked about the bronzer, wearing the bronzer. 
<laughs> love the bronzer. Let's talk about this blush here. So this is one of the Sephora matte colorful blushes. Now they have a variety of shades within the colorful blushes, matte uh, formulations, as well as more luminous formulations. Now this is what the old packaging used to look like. I really, really have enjoyed this shade. I just think it's a really nice kind of pop for the spring. But again, this formula is very thin, not necessarily super, super silky, which again, I don't think that necessarily is a bad thing, but with the new reformulation of the colorful blushes, this is even silkier, but still thin. So it has this beautiful way of melting into the skin. I've been noticing with these powder products from, you know, the newer releases, they just have this beautiful kind of melt into the skin feel. Now this is the shade Sweet On You, perfect coral shade for the summer. I honestly couldn't be happier with it. And I just love how natural it appears once it's applied to the skin. It's not choppy. It doesn't kind of stamp onto the skin in an awkward way. To me, this is just such a beautiful color for someone that wants to add that warmth and pop into a look. Just applying a little bit of this like right here. Like don't be afraid to get it almost like a little bit under the eyes. It's one of my tricks to make my entire makeup look look more natural. Emulates this kind of youthful sun-kissed flush, but either way, there are a bunch of different shades to choose from. This one really spoke to me. It applies absolutely beautifully, and I think that this is another hidden gem at Sephora. Very, very happy that uh, the reformulated version happens to be even better than um, the original. That's what we want to see with a reformulation, you know what I mean? We want to see that improvement, and I have been really happy with um, these reformulated items. Now, towards the end of the video, I'm gonna mention a couple products that I don't think that you should pick up. So make sure you're sticking towards the end of the video. There's some items that I know a lot of people talk about that I just, I've tried and I don't think are worth it. So stay tuned for that. But how about we talk about this mascara? This is the Sephora Love the Lift Mascara. I just got the mini size. I like that there is that option to get a mini or the full size. So this is a curling, lifting, volume mascara that Sephora has released. I gotta tell you guys, I am very often super, super skeptical of a mascara over $10. I That's just how I am. I have my like holy grail though, which is the Make Waves from Tower 28. Like, I don't even know how many of these I've gone through. It's just like the best mascara. So when I go into mascara views, like I'm expecting a lot. I have been very impressed with this one. And I gotta say, I think that if you had any sort of wear time issue with the Tower 28, I would maybe even look into this. The reason I say that is I was wearing it yesterday. I went to a show. I actually saw Linda Smith. If you are not familiar with her music, please go check her out, especially if you're into like um, DIY, self-recorded kind of like lo-fi music. She is definitely a pioneer in that realm, but she was playing a song. I started crying. And afterwards, I was just expecting to just have makeup all over my face. My makeup did not run at all, um, including the eyeshadow that I was wearing, which was a cream eyeshadow. I'll talk about those in a second. And that isn't always the case with the Tower 28. I think the wear time is better on this. I do think the Tower 28 gives me more like of a vertical lift. So aesthetic wise, I prefer that one in that way. However, this is not the waterproof version of this mascara. And I'm like half sure that there might be a waterproof version now too. But this just gives this kind of fanned out, fluttery, separated look to the lashes. I actually notice um, in particular a lot of these like occasional um, lashes that kind of get longer than the other ones. And it creates this really kind of, not PC, not PC in a bad way, but that kind of lash extension effect of, or even an individual lash effect where a couple lashes are longer than the others and it kind of creates this ethereal effect. This is a very, very pretty mascara. Again, I don't think the lashes get as straight like long, long, long length, but I do notice this kind of fanned out, 
winged out curled effect with the lift from Sephora Collection. And by the way, I'm just going to throw it out there. If you plan on purchasing any items, especially like because it is the savings event period, I would highly suggest placing an order for delivery or doing like a delivery pickup kind of situation. Reason being, one, you can use my links and support the channel. <laughs> Absolutely no pressure to say that, but I feel like I should probably say that. Secondly, and importantly, the Sephora, Sephora said this was in stock at my local Sephora. I went in and it was not in stock. And I, I just feel like the stock issues, had I purchased it ahead of time and then picked it up in store, they would have already been able to tell me that it actually was out of stock. And that did happen to me the other day. I like went to pick up the red shade of the Glossier Generation G, not the Generation G, the Cloud Paint, because I have a red blush video coming that I'm very excited about. But anyway, they told me that it was out of stock, even though online it said it was in stock. So just like kind of a word to the wise situation here. I've been really, really happy with this one. Sorry to go on a tangent, but okay, let's talk about the eyes because I just mentioned crying yesterday. The Sephora Colorful Shadow Sticks. Sephora used to make their colorful eyeshadows. They were single shadows and you can still find a few online so they're not completely discontinued but I'm pretty sure they're being phased out. You know what I mean? We'll see if they do a reformulation like they have with some of the other items they have. I am gonna mention them. I think that they're great but honestly a lot of the shades that I've loved and recommended are completely out of stock now. So all of that to say is that they do have the colorful shadow sticks and I've been wondering about these. Are they good? Are they bad? What's the situation? And my answer is it depends on what shade you get. So first of all, right out of the gate, I want to come out and say that if you see any of the matte shades in a shade that you like in stock, I can absolutely recommend pretty much across the board the matte shadow sticks from this Sephora collection. Super smooth, really easy to blend out on the eyes. They don't get that kind of stick to the eyes and not blend feel that some more affordable shadow sticks can do. And believe me guys, when I tell you, I've tried a lot of shadow sticks. I've tried a lot and a lot of the matte ones are just so stiff and almost, you, you know, it's not good to put a very stiff product on the eye, especially, you know, the, the skin there is so thin. It can really result in an irritated eye and, you and think about makeup being applied every single day for so many years. No, it doesn't matter when you're rough with your skin, maybe once or twice, but over the years, if you're continuously being aggressive on the eyes, it's just not good for the skin. Okay, sidebar, but that's just to say that this is just so gentle, really easy to blend. And then once they set, they stay in place. So you're not gonna have transfer. They're not gonna readily crease on the eyes. I've talked about like my formulation for most of my eye looks and typically a matte kind of base shadow that is long wear goes right into the crease no matter what eye look I'm doing to just help with the longevity of everything. I would highly suggest these for that. And again, with like the 30% off, which by the way, you have to be a beauty insider to get that 30% off you, which basically just means like you need to sign up for their email list. And these are like insanely cheap when you get that discount. So so if you happen to be looking for a matte kind of base shadow to make everything last longer, um, I do think that these are good. The shimmer shades, I think, I've swatched a lot of them in person. I think that they're hit or miss. Some just seemed a little bit flat to me, like just kind of like meh. However, these two, these are the ones that are on my eyes and these are the ones that I really like. There were some others though um, that I thought were pretty, but I mean, these are also like kind of very classic Amanda shades, I'd say. So Truffle Shimmer as well as Fawn Shimmer are both so pretty. So what I did today was I applied Truffle Shimmer. It's basically kind of like a smoky winged liner. These can be used as shadows and liners. And I've actually in the past used these like kind of under the lower lash line and smudged out. And they just, they stay put in a really pretty way. I do find that I need to build up truffle shimmer. And I think it's because of the fact that it is shimmer. It's not like a matte product. 
The matte ones have more like immediate pigmentation, I would say. So definitely check those out for that. Just find the truffle shimmer gives me this kind of undone, sleepy, grungy kind of shadow liner look that I find to be like grungy, but also a little bit softer than more of a very graphic liner. It becomes more of just like a smoky bedroom eye thing with the truffle shimmer. I really enjoy it, really easy to apply and blend out. But then I've been using the fawn shimmer on my lids. Maybe I'll add a little bit more just so you guys can see. Oh, by the way, a uh, note about this one. This one comes out. My other two don't do this, but the fawn shimmer comes out of the tube, which is annoying. I mean, the product's still fine, but you know, nevertheless annoying. Um, and with any like kind of shimmer topper, I always like to take it on my finger and then apply it like right in the middle. You see how it gives you that light reflection. And I really like this shade because it's more of like um, a shimmering taupe. And this is a shade that a lot of affordable brands do not come out with. This one I find to be very pretty. I find it something between a metallic and like a sparkly top coat. It's taken down a notch a little bit, so it could be better for daytime for those of you that don't want like glitter fallout or like straight glitter on the lids, which I mean, I'm, I'm a glitter person, so I don't mind that but I do see that comment occasionally, so hopefully that is helpful. I have been very impressed with uh, the longevity overall. And I gotta tell you, I know that a lot of the matte ones have been going out of stock, but if you can find one, I think that the matte ones in particular are a very good find. Shall we talk about the lips? Um, lip plumper. This is the Outrageous Intense Plump lip plumper from Sephora. You will find this one with the red cap or like the original, which has more of that silver cap. Can I just say, I've tried both, I like both, and I don't really see a difference between them. And I don't see too much of a difference. I think that maybe the intense, the tingle lasts a little bit longer. I'll notice a tingle for a solid 15 minutes when I apply this. But let me break down this lip plumper for you guys. First of all, you guys can see I have like, I have not the biggest lips in town. I think that they make sense for my face. But you know what? Sometimes I just want a little bit of extra plump. This doe foot applicator is kind of like a small triangle, like a rounded triangle. I find it really nice for application because with a lip plumper, you don't want to get it outside the lip lines because again, it's a product that is going to be tingling. So I find I kind of want to keep it tight on the eyes or oh my god, on the lips. Can you imagine putting this on your eyes? This is the shade 02, and it's kind of this like shimmering, very soft pink nude. There's a little bit of like a pink shimmer to it, but it's not really apparent necessarily on the lips. It's very soft, um, but there is shimmer throughout. They also have a red shade that is on the way to me. And they also have these new like sheer shiny lipsticks that are also on the way to me. So feel free to check out the comments because I might leave a comment like pinned of my first impressions of those products. But anyway, I'm giving you guys a before and after of my lips between I believe 15 minutes of how my lips look like before, applied, and then how they looked once I thought the tingle took full effect. I think I, I see a difference personally. It's subtle, it's not like a really intense, Honestly, I think some can look kind of like sick. It can make your lips look sick and puffy and like chapped. This doesn't do that, but it still gives a decent plump. By the way, the scent is kind of that sweet mint lip plumper scent, which is very, very similar to the Dior Lip Maximizers. If you know that kind of old favorite of a lot of folks, the Dior Lip Maximizer in like that pinky shade that's almost kind of just like translucent. I've talked about this with the original lip plumper from Sephora. They're basically the same thing. I'm not gonna like say that they're exactly the same, but I don't see much of a difference. So save your cash, just go with the Sephora collection in my opinion. No, it's not fancy, but it definitely works equally as well as that one. And another little nice thing about this lip plumper is that, yeah, it screws, but do you hear that? It has that lock, which makes this better for putting in your bag. Um, having that lock makes it feel more secure. 
So I think that's nice. And I'm really, really excited to try the red shade because the red shade I think could be so pretty for the summer. For the lips, I lined my lips today with the Sephora Rouge Gel Lip Liner. And this is the shade 01 The Nudist. It, again, can be very difficult to find some shades at an affordable price, whereas I think some more, more expensive brands just like are able to play around with a wider range of shades. And I find that particularly to be the case with more cool tone shades, oddly enough. All this is to say is that like, if you enjoy like the Makeup Forever Endless Cacao shade, I believe it's called, or if you even enjoy other more like taupey cool toned lip liners to do like a kind of lip contour, this is a very, very good option. It's a really, really light, cool toned, taupey pink. I'm wearing it today. And again, it creates a little bit of that shadow for the lips that especially if you have a little bit of a lighter skin tone like I do, it's a very realistic, like contoured look. You're really able to overline without it looking like you're really overlining which I think is what most of us want if we go that route. It's more of a gel texture, it's very creamy, it lasts really well, but it's not like a stiff pencil form formula, so if you prefer that, this is more of like a stiff gel, not necessarily like a stiff, stiff pencil liner. Like it's not similar to like the MAC ones, for example. As a whole, have used this since like my first Sephora Hidden Gems video it's really really good and by the way this is a screw up like you screw this bottom and it refills don't try to sharpen this with a pencil with like a pencil sharpener because that's what i did and a bunch of plastic came off and then it made this kind of unusable so this is my second one <laughs> that one has has sadly passed on the sephora collection shadow brushes the sephora collection in general has a lot of different brushes right these are the two that I've consistently recommended for a very long time. My number one favorite is the Sephora Collection 18 brush, the Pro 18. It is a very, very soft, dense pencil brush. What this is really good for is detail work. So it fits so perfectly under the lash line to get like a very quick smudgy look under there, but I find it nice for again, more like detail work on the outer corner or because it's so soft, because it's dense, but it's still a pencil brush, this is beautiful to apply more moussey, creamy eyeshadows. So for example, like the Charlotte Tilbury Eyes to Mesmerize, any of these thicker whipped textures, having an eyeshadow brush like this, it just, it, it blends them very, very easily. So if you don't want to use fingers for a formula like that, this is also a brush that I highly recommend for that. But it equally works as well for powder shadows, but I find it particularly working well for cream eyeshadows. Or you could go with the Pro 15, and the Pro 15 is really good to just swipe product onto the lid. If you want like a one and done, it's really easy to take this, because it's kind of flat. It's more of a flat brush that you can also like stand up and, and work it more into the crease, but it works well to kind of lay flat on the eye and swipe on product. Again, very soft, really, really good quality brushes. So these are like my top two picks. Now, before we get into two items that I think you should skip from the Sephora collection, one last favorite of mine are the retractable eyeliners from the Sephora collection. I have this kind of forest shade as well as this um, warmer brown. They're just, they're really nice. I mean, they're not gonna be the absolute most long wearing liner that you'll ever use, but I think they last just as long as like my 24 seven liners from Urban Decay, for example. They're creamy, they glide onto the eyes very easily. The only caveat, and that's this is kind of the case with a lot of retractable eye pencils is that eventually they will dry up. You know, the one good thing about a pencil liner that you have to sharpen is they're way less likely to dry up. These are about like two and a half, three years old and they have dried out a little bit since I first got them. So, you know, just a caveat with these in particular. I actually have one more favorite that I 
almost forgot to talk about before we get into the products that I think you should skip. The Sephora Daily Brush Cleaner Spray. This is essentially like Cinema Secrets. If you guys are familiar with Cinema Secrets, it's this is essentially like a hand sanitizer for your brushes. So if you need to get them clean, you need to get all the color off without, you know, fully submerging them in water and washing them, like you should be doing that too. But this is really good for like quick, get the brushes clean. And this is really nice because it is already in a spray bottle. So you just spray the product directly on the brushes or on like a paper towel or cloth. And then you just like gently wipe off the product and it gets them clean very, very fast. Does not dry out the bristles either, which is really nice. Very good. And also I recently found out when I was um, researching that it comes in a mini, which I think is excellent for travel. Or if you don't think that you're gonna use a product like this so much to warrant the larger size, having that little mini I think is just like convenient. But the two products that you should not pick up from the Sephora collection, both of which I bought and are somewhere around here. Luckily, those are the two items that I misplaced rather than the ones that I actually like. The best skin foundation from the Sephora collection. I know a lot of people like it, I am not one of those people. It felt very lackluster, maybe better for someone with a more oily skin type. So there is that potential there. It just looked like a very, very basic foundation. Something that I would have tried like 10 years ago. No innovation there and just not a formula I would ever revisit. Sad to say that I really wanted to like it, but I just did not. And then their new glow concealer. I wanted to love this so bad because I had previously been a fan of the Bright Future concealer from the Sephora collection. This was very dewy and yet had no coverage. And then when it set down, somehow my eyes looked darker than they were. So I don't know what's happening with that formula. Honestly, for me with under eye concealer, that's something that I am so picky about a formula that I would rather just splurge on a formula I already know I like, like the Kosos Revealer, the Tower 28 Swipe Serum Concealer. These are formulas I can really depend on. Um, and that one was just one that I kind of dreaded even putting on my eyes again. All right, everyone. So those are the Sephora collection hidden gems. If you think I missed anything, if you have any hidden gems from the Sephora collection of your own, uh, definitely leave me a comment down below. I'd love to try them out. And I will also leave links to everything I talked about in today's video down below for you all. Thank you guys so much for being here and I'll see you in my next one.